of the Ultimate Tactics podcast. I'm really happy to be back. It's been some time again. Um, building habits is quite difficult and losing habits is quite easy. But so um, it is what it is. I do want to talk about a bit of Seth Godin in the very beginning again. And then I'd like to go ahead with, you know, some book that I'm probably going to find. Maybe it's going to be uh, um, uh, the, the the one that I've actually been talking about and or reading through, going through the last few few times. But let's check out what Seth Godin is saying. There we it, it might actually also only be Seth because it is quite good value. <laughs> anyway, you know, uh, there has always been this kind of debate in my head around mediums because a website is just a medium as well as a book is a medium. And in the end, you can find theoretically, well, theoretically, you can have uh, the same information on some blog as in a book. And um, why is then reading a book and or going through a book um, apparently more valuable and and just plainly better, you know? Because sometimes it appears to be the case that, um, I mean, also in like, even though I get it, uh, in uh, educational institutes, universities, schools and whatever, um, they might force you to take sources from, you know, written things like books or um, uh, news articles or just some magazines and whatever. Um, I mean, of course, if it is printed, it might have a different value because it might be valuable enough to be printed, you know, which, um, you know, may not necessarily be the case for some blogs. Um, but it may actually also be the case, I guess, that a big part of Seth's writing might be emerging from some research or some things that he's doing for the blog or that he's writing for the blog. And maybe there are even some blog articles in his books, just like in entirely with probably a few, um, few changes, of course, you know, maybe. But in the end, it is just about mediums. The first one is the gracious, I guess, use of plastic, then the expanding frontier of ignorance. This is what I want to read. Some fields of endeavor continue to narrow down the unknown in search of the recipe, the efficient method of industry. And others live on Feynman's expanding frontier of ignorance where each closed door leads to several newly opened doors. That is a fundamental choice in our work, to close doors on our way to an answer or to open them on a way to things we never expected. We should choose our path wisely because each brings its own challenges and also rewards. If no is not an option, then neither yes is. Enrollment requires choice. PS, one of my all-time favorite and in core episodes of Akimbo is out this week, how to get into a famous college. I might actually listen to this then. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, the thing is, famous colleges may not necessarily be uh, be good, actually. You know, they are just famous and, you know, probably also they're having quite a bit of funding, you know, whether it is private funding and or like governmental, official, whatever funding. I don't know. They might have or probably have way more than kind of the average public university, high school, whatever, which is a bit of a fucked up thing um, because, well, I don't know, you know, this, this also just means that people, so professors and or whoever is teaching there, um, you know, might be more willing to work kind of the same job where he or she is. Uh, getting paid more and uh so it's just like it, it's difficult it, it really actually is anti-smart 
There is a difference between intellectual and smart. A plumber is smart. They have to do, they have to know how to do a skilled and effective job on a task in hand. Intellectualism isn't about practical results. It is a passion for exploring what others have said. Thoughts this. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, though this approach is sometimes misused to make others feel uniformed or too stall. I'm sorry, uninformed. What the fuck? If you want to know what the scholars have written, ask an intellectual. And if you have got a problem worth solving, it might pay you to ask a smart person. And yet, if the GPS is broken and we need directions, sometimes we hesitate to ask a local. And if your computer isn't working, swearing at it might be less effective than asking an IT pro. There are a couple of reasons we might resist help from someone who is smart. It exposes us to change and all the emotions that come from that. If we insult ourselves from useful insights, we can stay put, stuck with no changes required. It can make us seem dumb in comparison. It might be better to live with a problem than to be seen as someone who didn't know about it. Access to smart is easier than ever before, but we need to seek it out. We need to ask. I'm actually somebody that, that really rarely asks for help. Um, I don't know. I like to just do it myself. And I might be also kind of part of this problem or I might be having this problem too. That, uh, I don't know, maybe I just don't want to look dumb. And this is the reason why I'm not asking for help, even though it it is way more efficient. It, it really is. Most of the time, one could just ask. But I don't, for whatever reason. Is it raining? No, it's not. I hope. Choose your customers, which is the next one. And also choose your future, apparently. But let's have a look at sivas.org. Sivas.org slash book. And there we're having a nice... Is this new? This is indeed new. You can ne negotiate anything by Herb Cohen. I want to read this one. It is the 5th of August today. And um, this book or this book notes site, this book notes article was published on the 2nd of August. And um, it is a 10 out of 10 uh, strongly recommended by Derek Sivers, which is a good thing, a really good thing. So let's check it out, I guess. The little abstract. Everything is negotiable, challenge, authority. You have the power in any situation. This is how to realize it and to use it. I must read classic from 1980 from a master negotiator. My notes here aren't enough because the little book is filled with so many memorable stories. Examples of great day-to-day -day movements of negotiation that will stick in your head for when you need them. I especially love the one about the power of the prisoner in solitary confinement. So go by and read the book. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10 rating, even though the second half of the book loses steam because the first half is so crucial. And I think if, I don't know if, if people and or um, so writers or publishers, if they kind of, because I've often heard and or read that, you know, the first half is good or the second half is good, but the first isn't and or just vice versa or whatever. And, and I actually do wonder if people are indeed, um, if they divide the book in like one half and then the other half, or if this is just, you know, complete nonsense. But anyway, my notes. Power is the capacity or ability to get things done. It determines whether you can or can't influence your environment. It gives you a sense of mastery over your life. I don't know if power is the capacity or ability to get things done. You know, it might also be the power, well, power being the power to make someone else do that for you. Um, which, of course, leads to things be, being, being, being done, things getting done, um, but you yourself aren't doing it. All power is based on perception. If you think you've got it, then you have got it. And you have more power if you believe you have power and view your life's encounters as negotiations. 
most people firmly believe that they can't negotiate. This is a prime example of creation of, I'm sorry, creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't know. I mean, um, this lets me think about not nihilism. Fuck, what is it called? I actually do not remember. It, it might actually be nihilism, but I do not think so. This philosophy or this way of thinking is just about um, kind of challenging one's thoughts in terms of looking for uh, signs of thoughts that are not really serving me. And um, I mean, I can choose what I think and I can choose what I believe and I can choose what I do. And so it makes more sense to choose things that serve me rather than things that do not. Which means, um, well, if I think that I'm not a good negotiator, then, uh, well, what's the benefit of that? You know, what's the benefit of me thinking that? Um, always depends on the phrasing, I'd say, and always depends on how you talk to yourself and, um, well, besides what you're saying. But me saying that I am a dumbass is something completely different than, okay, I might not be good at X, Y, and C, um, but I know that, you know, I could do something about it, you know, which might be kind of um, growth and fixed mindset in a nutshell or whatever. Anyway. Um, therefore, I might say, okay, I can or can't negotiate or um, I am not too good at negotiating because I don't do it that often, you know, maybe because you also don't do it that often. Force yourself to go outside your own experience by vigorously testing your assumptions. You'll discover to your astonishment that many of them are false. Always have a sense of mastery over your situation. Pick and choose your opportunities based upon your needs. Don't allow yourself to be manipulated or intimidated by those who aren't concerned with your best interest. Yeah, uh, I think really, really good advice. Pick and choose your opportunities based upon based, uh, based upon your needs. Because, um, you know, your needs might also change. You know, the next day you would like to have a bit better health rather than a bit more money. You have the freedom to choose your attitude toward any given set of circumstances and the ability to affect the outcome. You can play a much greater role than you thought in shaping your life and improving your lifestyle. Unreality is the true source of powerlessness. What we do not understand, we cannot control. Yes. And um, therefore we need to know actually quite a few things in life. Well, I would say actually kind of basic uh, human physiology might be useful or probably is useful. Let's put it like that. Um, among other things, maybe also basic psychology, maybe, um, you know, basic negotiation, probably uh, a lot of basic things. Of course, I don't necessarily need to know how to, um, I don't know, build a table or um, build a door or just um, something electronical. I don't know. Um, it might not be too important to know that um, if if one is having the money, one could definitely also get some people for one to do so. Um, but yeah, probably also really interesting, to be honest. If life is a game, negotiation is a way of life. And um, with that being said, a bit of a short episode here. Um, I'm hopefully going to see you the next time. But up until then, have a good day, week, month year, whatever. And see you soon.